So next I'm going to do a series of videos on the energy flow within the ecosystem. This is uh, energy flow in the ecosystem video number one. Uh, and as we've learned in previous videos, a lot of the elements and a lot of the organisms in our ecosystem gain their energy or their fuel from other organisms. So we as human beings, we eat food and we gain those en that energy from what we eat. Um, and some of those organisms that we eat get it from the sun or get it from other, anim uh, from other organisms and other animals. Um, and there is this energy that's passed along um, and a sense of energy as a fuel that keeps other living things going. For this video, I'm going to be talking about um, the, pyramid of, the pyramid of numbers and the cycle of matter. So first, the pyramid of numbers. And this is really a sort of an, an ecologist used this term. It's a way of categorizing organisms and measuring energy loss. So if we think about um, producers, and we'll talk about it when I show the graphic, um, there's a lot of potential energy. And then as those things are consumed, there's an energy loss. And then as those things are consumed, there's an energy loss. And then there's, when well, those things are consumed, there's an energy loss. So as we move up the pyramid, there's an energy loss. And ecologists will study um, the, the, the loss along each level of the pyramid. They also use it to record the number of consumers and producers along the way to, to really look at those interactions and those balances between those elements. So here's uh, a really pretty pyramid of numbers. So for example, let's say in a given region, there are one million producers. So these are the, the, the vegetation, those, those things that, um, uh, that have taken, they've gotten their basic needs from an abiotic element and now, and they've gotten that energy and then they will pass it on along um, that energy flow. And then in the next level, there's 10,000 primary consumers. So these are our consumers that are going to eat these producers. So there's an energy loss here, right? Because these things, you know, they're not going to just eat one of each. They need several of each to, in order to have, to have the energy to meet their basic needs. And then we go to our secondary consumers and then ultimately up to our tertiary consumer. This doesn't mean one of an, uh, a specific organism. It could mean a species, right? So there'd be, this is sort of the top of the food chain and then moving down through my pyramid, we'll talk about the different things in that food chain in that specific region and the flow of energy. Uh, and the matter cycle. So the earth is a closed system, which means there isn't anything added to our system and nothing leaves our system. Um, so we, we maintain our carbon, water, oxygen, hydrogen, and nitrogen levels naturally through a natural sort of recycling system within our environment. Um, but it's really important that these elements stay in balance because if we get too much of one thing, it's difficult for those things that are recycling it to then bring it back and put it back through um, into our environment. So our detrivores and our decomposers are our natural ability to take that energy from those organisms and break it down and put it back into the earth and back into the soil to then um, recreate sort of that bottom of our pyramid, recreate those producers. And we, we have a natural cycle in our environment that maintains these levels. Um, but like we talked about any interaction, if there is something that absorbs one of these elements, um, for example, carbon, and then, then redistributes it as oxygen, like in our forests, if there is an imbalance in that relationship, more carbon and less forest, then this whole cycle comes out of whack um, because that balance in maintaining those levels isn't there. <laughs> 